What really happened in the missing years of Jesus? So what really happened in the missing years of Jesus? I'm going to give you some scriptures. That way you don't get deceived by a lot of heretical stuff you see online. So Hindus, New Agers, etc., and even saved Christians who get into Gnostic heresies. Yeah. What they try to do is that they dig up sources outside the Bible, what they see online, what they hear from Eastern uh, traditional traditions and sources, about what did Jesus do in his missing years, and they try to make it very interesting. Well, if it was that interesting, the Bible didn't mention it for a reason then, yeah. because I don't think God found it very interesting. Why? Because what you're going to find out is what God saw Jesus doing all this time. Now, they claim also, uh, liberals try to push this too. I took a Bible class at Berkeley, of all things. And they try to push this idea that Jesus was borrowing his teachings from India and a lot of other uh, teachings that later Gnostics developed. Now, I'm going to show you the dumb arguments concerning this. Let's look at Luke chapter 2, verse 39. Luke chapter 2 and verse 39. So, during the timeline of Jesus Christ during his missing years, I'll tell you what he was doing. So, let's look at his, when he was 12 years old. So, they say that from 12 years old all the way till when he was 30, those are the missing year gaps. Before Jesus was baptized by John, something happened over here. What happened over here? He went to India, you know. <laughs> he borrowed from some uh, Eastern pagan sources. That's why Jesus was very wise. Okay, let's look at Luke chapter 2, verse 39. I'll tell you what happened after that. The Bible says, And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord... They returned into Galilee to their what? Own city, Nazareth. Okay, this is after the birth of Jesus, okay? Where did he go? He went to India. He went to Egypt. They, some people uh, mentioned that when he went to Egypt, then he started to develop some more stuff, uh, Gnostic things carried on to India, etc., etc. But no, it says that af uh, afterwards they went to Israel, Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. Look at verse 40. The child grew... Wax strong in spirit, filled with wisdom. Notice this was in Nazareth, not India. And the grace of God was upon him. Not from India, okay? He didn't do some yogi and the grace of God came upon him, okay? He wasn't doing yoga. It was all at Nazareth. Now look, 41 all the way down to verse uh, 50. 40, uh, 41 all the way to 50. That's that famous story when he was 12 years old. What happened afterwards? Verse 51. He went down with them and came and returned to India. He went to Nazareth. Came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. See, he was subject to the Jewish family, Jewish religion, not Eastern paganism. But his mother kept all these things in, his heart, in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Look at that. All of that where? All of that was... In Nazareth. Another thing is, look at chapter 4, verse 16. Chapter 4, verse 16. When Jesus went to Nazareth after his birth, after fleeing to Egypt, he actually lived in Nazareth and continued to live in Nazareth. Because look at chapter 4, verse 16. So this is when, after he was baptized, okay? After he was baptized, he was speaking in the synagogue. So this is where Luke 4... This is the timeline here. Okay, I'm giving you a timeline here. So look at Luke chapter 4, verse 16. And he came to where? Nazareth. Where what? He had been brought up. Look at that. So even right over here, the Bible recognizes that when he went to Nazareth, that's was where he was brought up all this time. But keep reading. Strange. Look at this wording. And was... As his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for it to read. Did you read that? Uh, that's good. Church that he, yeah. yeah, so he had a custom. This was a normal thing. This was not a new thing for Jesus. It, look, it shows right here he was going by his family's custom uh, that was normal throughout the, the time during the synagogue. Re read every word in your King James Bible, man. Read every word in your King James Bible. It'll give you the answer. 
I'll give you the answer. That was his custom, his family custom all that time. He wasn't going by the custom of India. You notice that? Yeah. Custom of Nazareth. That shows he was there all that time. Look at uh, Luke chapter, uh, let's see over here. Look at Matthew chapter 2, verse 19. Matthew chapter 2, verse 19. Matthew chapter 2, verse 19. Notice Jesus Christ from his birth. We know it was at Bethlehem, right? So in his birth was in a little town called Bethlehem. At Bethlehem, you'll notice over here that they went to Egypt. They had to flee to Egypt. But it wasn't a long time. When they fled to Egypt... Oh, and they took a flight all the way to India. No, they went to Nazareth, okay? So notice over here, this is consistently throughout the Bible, Nazareth, Nazareth, Nazareth. That's where Jesus went to, okay? He wasn't studying under Hindu leaders or pagan, pagan religious people. He went to Nazareth again. Look at this, during this timeline, before he was 12 and between Egypt, okay? Now look at this timeline. Between this timeline here, where was he? He was in Nazareth during this time. Verse 19, but when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. What happened? Saying, arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of India. No, go to the land of Israel. Verse 21, Israel. Verse 22, Galilee. Verse 23, Nazareth. He, had, he did not go to India during this time. Okay, if he didn't go to India during this time, look, we're covering from his birth, okay? If he, did, he had no chance of going to India this time, he was at Bethlehem. He had no chance of going to India this time. From 12 years, the missing years, he was in Nazareth all that time. And afterwards, he definitely did not go to India. Then did he go to India? No, he did not go to India, okay? No matter what you're reading. Now, look at chap Luke chapter 2, verse 51 through 52. Where, did, where was Jesus learning from? Jesus is learning from. Notice his learning. So not only his location was in Nazareth, his learning was in Nazareth. His learning was in Nazareth. Look at Luke chapter 2, verse 51 through 52. 51 through 52. He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. See that? All of his learning was in Nazareth. By the way, Jesus was known as a prophet of what? Galilee. All these Jews recognized what? That his learning was where? As a prophet. It's all in Galilee. That region. Okay, if that's not enough, go to Mark chapter 1, verse 9. Mark chapter 1, verse 9. Don't turn to extra canonical sources. Shouldn't you be looking at God's word, not at man's word? Amen. What are you looking at? What are you looking at? Oh, but it's so interesting. Yeah, it's so interesting. People will be interested on a video if I put up a video that Jesus was Luke Skywalker fighting Darth Vader. That would be very interesting. It's as interesting as that, but it's as ridiculous as that. It's a made-up fairy tale, made-up story. <clears throat> look, at, look at Mark chapter 1, verse 9. So now let's look at, well, no, he, there was a chance. There was a chance somewhere where he did go to India somewhere. No, notice over here that when he was baptized of John, so this is his baptism, right? You know where he came out of? Nazareth. Look at Mark chapter 1. It's like the scripture want to make sure people get it. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from where? Nazareth of Galilee and was what? Baptized of John in Jordan. See, Jesus did not take a trip to India or yoga land or etc. He was in Nazareth right before John's baptism too. His whole life was Nazareth. Right before the baptism, he was in Nazareth. During this mid-timeline, he was in Nazareth. Over here, obviously, he was in Bethlehem. Okay. Amen. Now, 
Here's another one, all right? If that's not enough, this is the most convincing argument. Look at John chapter 3, verse 18. Here's the most convincing argument. You know how you easily debunk, you don't even have to look at all these verses where Jesus came from. Didn't you know that? Even if the Bible doesn't mention where Jesus specifically came from, you can easily debunk the argument that Jesus' learning was all from India. You know how you easily debunk that? How you easily debunk that is, then why does, why does Jesus' teaching conflict with Hindu, New Age, Gnostic teachings, huh? Amen. Amen. Isn't that easy then? So don't claim that uh, Christian knowledge came from India. No, don't do that. Or Hinduism, New Age. No, don't give me that kind of garbage, okay? Because Jesus, his teaching was actually, uh, why would he contradict what he learned from India, you know? John chapter 3, verse 18 and verse 36. What does Hinduism, New Age, teach? Cycle of reincarnation. Yep. Nope. Uh, Jesus denies that one. He says, no. He says that when you die, what happens? Salvation is actually by faith, believing, not by what? Works. Wait a minute. For us to be saved, according to New Age teaching, and Hinduism is by what? I have to do these deeds, good life, good karma, and because of that, then you know, I can attain my salvation, and then through this cycle of reincarnation, bleh, Jesus denies that. Look at John chapter 3, verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is what? Condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Look at verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but what? The wrath of God abideth on him. So it shows you that if you are not saved, you're automatically, see that? The wrath of God is already on you. Amen. Not a cycle of reincarnation and forgiveness. See, the wrath of hell is on you. Not only that, if you believe at verse 18, what? You're passed from death automatically to what? Life. life. You don't have to go through a cycle. You're automatically passed from death to life. See, it's only two places, heaven and hell. No reincarnation over there. Look at Luke chapter 11, verse 24. Luke chapter 11, verse 24. Emptying the mind is a main theme and ingredient of New Age Hinduism teaching. And why would Jesus say that is demon possession then? That shows Jesus Christ is not for India teaching, okay? Look at Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Verse 24. Verse 24. When the unclean... Spirit is gone out of a man. He walketh through dry places seeking rest and finding none. He saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out. So this spirit left the body of, the uh, of this person. But when he returns to the body of this person, he sees it what? Verse 25. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. See, it's empty. Then goeth he and taketh to him seven more spirits, spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. You can also look at Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 through 45, and the other Gospels. And the other Gospels will mention how it's empty. Why? Because the spirit, when he leaves the man, he's able to bring in seven more spirits inside the man. Why? Because there's more room inside the body. Because it's empty. That's what you found at that passage. See, that, don't do this. Don't do the emptying thing that's opening, that's saying, welcome home, Satan. That's what you're doing. Every time you do that, that's saying, welcome home, devil. Come inside, legion. Careful. All right, let's look at Mark chapter 12, verse 29. Mark chapter 12, verse 29. If Jesus really learned from India, how come he does not believe that there are many gods but one God? How about that? To worship. It's just one God. Look at Mark chapter 12, verse 29. The Bible says, Mark chapter 12, verse 29, that there aren't many gods. It's just one, one Lord God to worship. Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, this is like the first commandment. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is what? One Lord. That's something in the first basic Bible principle everyone should know. How can a saved Christian be deceived by this ridiculous teaching when you don't even know the first basic Bible principle, when it should be only one God. 
See, how can Jesus learn from India then? John 14, 6. And let's close it here. John 14, 6. So you'll notice that India is not at all in this map. You know where India was? India was all the way over here. And you'll notice in this drawing over here, there is no arrow drawn. There is no lines connecting. No chart over here where Jesus ever visited India. It's a totally separate thing out there. Okay? Jesus was all the way here. All right? Okay. The last thing is this. According to new... If you love this new age principle, and actually... White people, I'm sorry, but this is very true, but white people are really bad with New Age teaching, true. Eastern religious teaching. In fact, there are Eastern religious people who are accusing white people, you're not understanding true Hinduism, true New Age teaching. So the white people, they see it this way, is that, oh, there are, through this New Age concept, there are many ways to heaven, you know? That's why all can unite as one. And that's why people who get into conspiracy theories mess up with this kind of teaching, New Age concept, where, you know, oh, you know, a lot of these religions, they teach the same principles, etc. No, God says there aren't many ways. There's only one way. John 14, verse 6, Jesus answered, saith unto him, uh, what did Jesus say over here? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the way, right? The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father. No one. No one can have access, all right? But by what? Me. Arrogant bigot, says the liberal white man who's into New Age stuff. Arrogant bigot, you. When they accuse you of that, just say this. I didn't say that. Jesus said that. Did you call him an arrogant bigot?